two important concepts for us are going to be vertical and adjacent angles. Now, for the purposes that we're going to use them, I'm going to define vertical and adjacent angles just in terms of two intersecting lines, an X, because we're going to talk about how angles relate in terms of an X. So, what are adjacent angles? Adjacent angles are two angles that share a common side. So, for example, the angles adjacent to A are B and D. The angles adjacent to B are A and C. Since A and B share this common side, and angles B and C share that common side. So B is adjacent to A, and B is adjacent to C. Vertical angles are the angles in terms of intersecting lines across the X from each other. They do not share a side. So A and C are vertical, and B and D, even though they're horizontal across the X, we still call them vertical angles. So let's write down a couple of examples here. So A and D are adjacent since they share that common side. There it is. And B and D are vertical since they're across the X from each other. Now a quick note. In the book, there are a few problems that talk about adjacent angles. And the way that the book does it is they just call any old two angles that share a side adjacent. So here we have angles that obviously don't come from the intersection of just two lines. Because if we extend these, you can see this one would go down like that. This one would go like that. And this one would go like that. So you can kind of clearly see here that A and B don't come from the intersection of two lines. There's kind of three lines involved to make these angles. So... In our purpose, we won't call them adjacent, but if there's any problems in the book that deal with adjacent angles, they count these guys as adjacent as well. So now that I told you about adjacent and vertical angles, I can tell you the relationship between adjacent and vertical angles in terms of their measure. And not only can I tell you what it is, I can show you why it is as well using the tools and the axioms that we have. So here is the X rule. It's a very powerful rule. It says two things. It says that if we have uh, two intersecting lines, maybe I should put that here. If we have two intersecting lines, two things happen. So the first one says that Adjacent angles are supplementary. So, for example, angle WOZ and WOX, since they're adjacent, they share the side W, they are supplementary. And vertical angles, like angles WOX and ZOY, these are congruent. So they have the same measure. Remember, congruent means that they have the same measure. So we're going to go about proving this, but let's talk about what we're going to do. So we're going to prove these separately. And in fact, we'll prove the first one first. That seems like a good thing to do. And for the second one, we're going to use the fact that we've proved the first one is true. That's going to be very important to us. So let's talk about the proof of the first one. And it basically says the following thing. So Obviously, we have a straight line here. Z, O, and X all lie on this straight line. And similarly, W, O, and Y do too. But we'll just deal with one case and we'll just say the other case is similar. So, since these points lie on a straight line, this angle Z, O, X is a straight angle. This angle here is 180 degrees. We know that. 
We also know that W is a point on the interior of that angle. So I know that angles ZOW and WOX sum to whatever ZOX is, and we know that it's 180 degrees, and that's the definition of being supplementary. So let's write that down, and let's be careful to make sure we tell the reason why each step is true. So the first one is why is ZOX 180 degrees? And it's because all of these points are collinear. They lie on the same line. And O is in the middle. So since Z, O, and X are collinear, then the measure of angle Z, O, X equals 100 80 degrees. That's half a circle. Okay. So we know that. So we also know that by postulate 6, or angle postulate, we're allowed to add angles. So the measure of angle Z O W plus the measure of angle W, O, X equals the measure of angle Z, O, X. Since W lies in the interior of angle Z, O, X. Remember, that was kind of the key for postulate 6. The point had to lie in the interior of this angle. So that's great. So combining these, two results. So we have that the measure of ZOX equals 180. And the measure of ZOW plus the measure of WOX equals the measure of ZOX. We know that's 180, so we can combine that. The measure of ZOW plus the measure of WOX equals 180 degrees, which means these angles... are supplementary by definition. That's the, that's the definition of being supplementary. They sum together to give you 180 degrees. Fantastic. So we're done with that. That's what we wanted to show. So we'll put a little square at the end. And if you wanted to think of this as an if-then proof, you could say, if two angles are adjacent, then those angles are supplementary. So you assume that these guys are adjacent. So that tells you that this is true. And you just need to show that they're supplementary. But the same thing would hold. It's just a different way of writing it. Okay. So let's do part... Or let's actually say... At the end, the other cases are similar. So, if we look back up here, we showed that WOZ and WOX were supplementary. We didn't do the other three cases, but if you think about it, the work would be the exact same except the labels would change. So we can just say other cases are similar since there's nothing new to do. Let's do the second part. Vertical angles are supplementary, or sorry, are congruent. And let's talk about why that is true. Well, I know, let's try and show that WOX and ZOY have the same measure. And here is the argument. 
The argument is that ZOW and WOX are supplementary, but so are ZOW and ZOY. So whatever measure this angle is, these angles both have to be 180 minus this measure. So these are going to be the same. So that's our argument there. Both of these angles have to be 180 minus the measure of ZOW, since these guys are supplementary and these guys are supplementary. Let's write that down algebraically. So, by part one, because we just proved that's true, we know that the measure of angle ZOW plus the measure of angle WOX is 180. Let's go up and check that just to make sure I have the labels correct, but I believe I do. ZOW, WOX, and then the next two are going to be ZOW and ZOY. So let's write that down. So the measure of ZOW plus the measure of ZOY is also 180, and I should put degree symbols here, since both pairs are adjacent. And remember, we want to show that the measure of uh, WOX equals the measure of angle ZOY. And I should put an angle symbol here as well. Okay. So, note that both of these equations equal 180 degrees. Well, if both left-hand sides equal 180 degrees, then both left-hand sides equal each other. So, since both left-hand sides equal 180 degrees, then the measure of angle ZOW plus the measure of angle WOX equals, so that's the left-hand side of the first one, so it equals the measure of ZOW plus the measure of angle ZOY. So there we go. They both equaled 180 degrees, so they both equal each other. And look, we have this common term here. We have the measure of that angle, ZOW, and both of them. That's just some number. Let's subtract it off from both sides of this equation. So if we subtract that off, what do we get? We get that the measure of WOX equals the measure of angle ZOY, which is what we want to show. Thus, we know that these angles, angle WOX and ZOY, are indeed congruent, which is what we wanted to show. And we can just say at the end, just like in the last case, that the other case is similar. And we'll put a little box at the end to say we're done our little proof. So there we have it. We've proved our two results that adjacent angles are supplementary and vertical angles are congruent. As a quick example, so if I have an X that looks like this, and I know the following thing, I know that this angle is 80 degrees. That's the angle I start with. What are the other angles? I'd say pause the video and give it a try, but I think this is pretty obvious using our rules. Well, we know that adjacent angles are supplementary, so these two angles have to add up to 180, so this angle has to be 100 degrees, and so does this one. 
And then you could say, well, these guys have to be adjacent, so this is 80. But you could also say these angles are vertical, so that has to be 80 as well, because vertical angles are congruent. These are both 80. These are both 100. So knowing that, anytime you see an X with two lines like this, the intersection of two lines, if you know one angle, you know four angles, which is fantastic. That'll help you out for sure. All right. We're going to work on proving a result that is, I'm going to call it the parallel X rule, that says that if we have a transversal of parallel lines, so we have these two lines in black, and they're parallel. So let me put a parallel marking on them, I guess in yellow. So I'll mark that they're parallel. And we have some transversal of them, a line that just cuts both of them. So the result will be, and I'll write it down on the next slide, that the angles up here, we can just kind of plop them down, down here. So with the corresponding angle, so let's, it's kind of easy to see the correspondence. So A corresponds to E because they're kind of both in the same location. So the uh, upper left and then B corresponds to F, upper right, C corresponds to G, lower left, D corresponds to H, lower right. So with those correspondences, we can say that the corresponding angles are congruent. So we just take these angles down here and we plop them here. But we, we need a way to be able to take angle measures up here and move them down here. And right now we don't have that. And the reason is we don't have a rule for our game geometry that tells us how to deal with parallel lines and angles, how they play together. So we need one more postulate, and it's called the parallel postulate. And it tells us how angles and parallel lines work together. This isn't the only way of expressing it. Um, there are loads of other ways, but I like this way. This way is quite simple. And it says that if you have two interior angles of a transversal of parallel lines. I just abbreviated that T-O-P-L, transversal of parallel lines. Then these guys, D and F, are supplementary. So that's the parallel postulate. And same thing here, C and E are supplementary. So that's the parallel postulate. And that's what we're going to use to prove that parallel X rule. Okay, so the parallel X rule says if there is a transversal of parallel lines, here it is, then the corresponding angles are congruent. And that correspondence is that natural correspondence that I talked about on the last slide. So the ones in the same position across the X's. Okay. Now I'm going to prove this, but I'm going to prove it in kind of just a sketchy way. So I'm not going to write it up particularly formal, formally, but I'll give you the idea. So, and I'll just talk my way through it, I guess. So, let's write down our situation. So, here are our angles here. We know these guys are parallel. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we know we have some angle here, let's call this angle A. And if I know that angle A is A, um, I know that the vertical angle across the X from it is also A. And then I know these two angles are going to be 180 minus A. I'm going to call them B, and I'm going to say B is 180 minus A, since they are adjacent to A and therefore supplementary. Okay, now we just use our X rule here, so maybe I'll just make a quick note. This is where we started. All of this was just using the X rule, our regular old X rule. Well, and that's kind of step one that we did. Okay. Well, the next thing, remember, we just 
um, learned about that parallel postulate or parallel rule of the game, which tells me that this angle here, A, and this angle are supplementary. So these two angles must add up to 180. Well, I know what that is. That angle there is B, because I already know an angle supplementary to A. So it has to be B, since A plus B is 180. So this one, this is our second step. That is step two. That is using our parallel postulate P7. And then finally, well, we've translated one angle across the X. We just need to translate the other one. So let's go ahead and do it. So this is B, this is B, this is A, this is A, just using the X rule again. So all these angles, we just use the X rule once more. And I guess I have that arrow going the wrong way. Let me fix that. Excellent. So basically, that's the proof in a nutshell. I didn't write it out super formally, but hopefully you got the gist of why this is true. And now we know why it's true, we can use it all of the time whenever we're in a situation that requires us to deal with angles and parallel lines. So I do want to tell you this little caveat here. The parallel X rule is kind of one of these biconditional statements or if and only if statements. So that tells us that it says if you have a transversal of parallel lines, then corresponding angles are congruent. But also it says if you have corresponding angles that are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So if you have a situation where you know that you don't have parallel lines, so let's say these guys, and you have a transversal, then you know here's A, B, C, and D, E, F, G, and H. Since these guys are not parallel, you know that A and E, they're the corresponding angles. They're the ones kind of in the upper right, or upper left, you could say. They are not congruent. So I'll draw the congruent symbol, and I'll put a not through it. Same with B and F, C and G, and D and H. All of these are not congruent. So if you find a situation where you don't know if lines are parallel, you can always check if you know that a corresponding angle is congruent, you know the lines are parallel, and if you find that they aren't, you know that they're not parallel. That's really fantastic. For example, let me just do one quick numerical example. Let's say we had this situation. I know that this angle is, let's say, 70. Two degrees, and I know this angle is 109 degrees. And let's call this line L1 and L2. We'll call this an example. So, or I should say maybe R instead of, or no, let's say is. Is L1 parallel to L2? Is this true? Well, let's check. So let's find the corresponding angle here, kind of in the upper right of both x's. So remember, by the x rule, this angle here has to be 180 minus this angle, since these guys are adjacent and therefore supplementary. So by the x rule, we know this guy has to be 108 degrees. Okay, but now I look at this, this is 108 degrees, this is 109 degrees. They don't have the same measure. So, since 
108 degrees doesn't equal 109 degrees. These angles, these corresponding angles, I should say, under that natural correspondence, are not congruent. Are not congruent. And if they're not congruent, well, that means that L1 can't be parallel to L2. So there's our solution to this problem. Let's try this problem here. So I'm giving you kind of two angle measures just in terms of this unknown K. So this angle here is 2K plus 5 degrees. This angle is 3 halves K degrees. And what I'd like you to do is pause the video now, and I'd like you to try to figure out the angles for all eight angles here. Figure out the measure for all eight angles, I should say. And one more thing, I didn't mark it in the diagram, but hopefully it was obvious, but I should mark it. These two lines are indeed parallel. So this is a transversal of parallel lines. Okay, pause the video and give it a go. Okay, now that you're back, the first thing that I want to do is I want to find a way of getting another angle here in this x so I can use the x rule to be able to come up with some equation. That's a good strategy. I notice that 3 halves k, that's going to be corresponding to this guy. So I know by the parallel x rule that this is also 3 halves k degrees. And that's by parallel x rule. OK. Well, then these two angles are supplementary. They're adjacent angles. So I know that 2k plus 5 plus 3 halves k is 180. OK, let's start solving this. Maybe to get rid of this fraction here, there's loads of ways of doing it. I'm going to get rid of this fraction right away just because I don't like dealing with fractions. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it. So multiplying everything on both sides by 2, this gives me 4k plus 10 and 3 halves k plus 2. Well, that cancels out that denominator, and I'm left with 3k. And that equals, well, 180 times 2 is 360. Let's simplify this. 4k plus 3k is 7k plus 10 equals 360. Let's subtract 10 from both sides. I get that 7k equals 350. Divide both sides by 7. And I get that k is 50. OK, so I know k is 50. That's great, but I'm not done the problem yet because the problem asks me to find all angle. And let me be a little more clear. Measures of angles. So I want to find the measures of the angles, OK? So I know that variable k is 50. So I know that this angle up here is going to be 2 times 50 plus 5, which is 105 degrees. And now that I know one angle, I know all of the other angles in this situation. I know these guys are um, supplementary, so this must be 75 degrees. Or I can plug in 50 into my original equation, 3 halves k, and get 75. And then let me just keep using the x rule. This is 75 degrees. This is 105 degrees. This is 75 degrees. This is 105 degrees. This is 75 degrees. This is 105 degrees. Just repeated applications of 
the parallel X rule and the X rule. It goes 105, 75, 75, 105. So down here, 105, 75, 75, 105. And that is how to use the parallel X rule. We'll see this over and over again once we talk a little more about polygons.